How to rebuild a Stuart Models 5A steam engine, part 19. Preparing to machine the expansion link. And I find this quite a difficult job. And like most engineering jobs, whether it be full size or model engineering, there are many different ways to achieve the same result. For instance, you could clean up the casting, mark it out, drill lots of holes and file between the holes and you could get something like this. But it's doubtful, particularly if you're a beginner. So I'm going to show how I did it. And the way that I'm going to show you how I did it seems to be the accepted method, and it's quite simple. The only problem is it's a bit of an accumulator. There's quite a lot of work to do on the casting before you machine the slot, and if you mess it up, you have to go right back to the beginning and start again. So if you're going to make one of these things, take your time with it. Think before you do any machining, and just enjoy it. As usual, the operation begins by cleaning up the casting. I'm using the belt sander, and I keep dipping the part in a pot of water to cool it down. That's why it keeps turning brown and looking very wet, because the water now is quite rusty. Mainly due to the other cast iron parts that I've been working on recently. This casting is much thicker than it needs to be, really. But it's a good thing, because it means you can get through any shale and get down to clean metal. Because apart from being functional, this part needs to look good. The main aim of this primary cleanup is just to get down to bare metal. When I've cleaned the casting down to bare metal all over, then I will put it in the milling machine to reduce it to its correct thickness. After cleaning the front and back, it's time to work on the outside edge. And the good news is it's cutting very cleanly. Here I'm using the one inch belt sander to just tidy up the outside edge. I'm trying not to get it to the finished outside dimension, because once I mill the slot, if that's slightly out, it's going to look horrible, and I will have to grind more metal away from the outside edge to make it look right, then it may be a bit too thin, and then it might be a mess and I'll have to start again. By showing you the end result right at the beginning of the video, you obviously know that it's going to turn out okay, but I could be cheating. I could have made five of these and just selected the best one. You'll see how I went on as the video progresses. I found that the 1 inch belt sander was not ideal to trim this part in this position. So here I'm using a file, but once again I'm not making it to the finished size. Overall the casting is still slightly larger on the outside edge than it needs to be. And without repeating myself too much, leave it like this. Don't keep taking more and more metal away, otherwise you will regret it leave the whole external dimension fractionally oversized. In this clip I'm using a half round needle file. Needle files are far less brutal than the large files and very good for detailing the small yet complex shapes. So how far have I got in the job? Not very far at all. This is what I would term a cleaned up casting blank. And what I'm doing here is drawing a nose and two feet on it. I've always enjoyed colouring in even though this is just a black felt tip pen, and I'm trying to decide whether this is actually a hippopotamus or a duckbill platypus, so I think I'll just remove this. I'm using a special pen here, it's for unmarking out. Right, that's enough stupidity, I should know better at my age. So now I'm marking the dimensions stated on the drawing. I'm marking the distance between the holes, which has to be one and a quarter inches. I'm sorry, I cannot give any metric measurements, I don't do metric, and the drawings are always imperial. And if imperial measurements are good enough for American engineering, then imperial measurements are more than good enough for me. I'm marking out everything twice. That's not because I'm a village idiot, it's just because I'm trying to show it clearly on the video. And sometimes the lines are a little bit thick, but the main thing is, I know where the holes need to go. And here, I'm drawing a ring round the marking out part, to make sure I've got this hole in the right place. And just for a change, I'm using a centre punch. My eyesight is not what it used to be. To do a job like this now, I have to wear one of these headset magnifiers. I don't use the torch part of it, I just use the lens, for seeing very small parts. And also for things like reading micrometer dials, and even the very small graduations on a ruler. I also drew a ring around the marking outlines, and I really don't know why I did that, I just felt like drawing a ring. And I drew the rings in the wrong place, I think I was just trying to turn the casting into a Bugatti Veyron. Anyway now I've taken my medication and I'm back to normal, and I'm using a centre drill to drill the holes. 
These finished holes are going to be 9 sixty-fourths of an inch in diameter, which is actually clearance size for 4BA, because eventually these are going to have pins through them that will be 9 sixty-fourths of an inch in diameter with 4BA nuts on the end in order to secure the eccentric rod forks to the expansion link. However, the hole at the end is different. That has to be 3 sixteenths of an inch in diameter to take a 3 sixteenths of an inch diameter pin with a 2BA nut on the end. And this 3 sixteenths of an inch diameter pin will connect the two links that I machined the other day to the expansion link. This 3 sixteenths of an inch diameter hole is going to be reamed so I'm drilling it currently with one imperial drill size less than 3 sixteenths of an inch and then the reamer will do the rest. And in case you're wondering why I didn't bother reaming the 9 64th holes, that's because I don't have a 9 64th reamer. I've never had to ream a hole that small. Here's the 3 sixteenths of an inch reamer going through, and this will give a very well finished, very accurate hole. I'd just like to take this opportunity to make a small but valid point. When you first start off in this hobby, you generally do not have enough equipment. You don't have enough machine tools, and you don't have enough hand tools. And you build these up over time. So sometimes you have to improvise, and this makes you better at the job, but it is much easier when you get the correct equipment. This expansion link has to be 9 30 seconds of an inch wide in order to fit in this gap, which is also 9 30 seconds of an inch wide. So what I'm doing here is, after applying some felt tip pen to the top of the expansion link blank, I'm using the width of the fork that I made earlier to mark it out. Now this is not a be all and end all, this is not set in stone, well, or cast iron. All that that crudely scribed line is telling me is, do not machine the expansion link blank down to this level. In any case, once I've done one side, I turn it over to do the other side, so I have to remark it out anyway, but I have a good idea how much metal I need to remove. And my logic, which of course is generated by the brain of a musician, says that once I've cleaned up this other side, I then remark it out in the gap and check it with the ruler, which is always a good idea. And yes, surprisingly enough, the line is exactly 9 30 seconds of an inch. But what my musician's brain is also telling me is, apart from don't forget to tap the part firmly into place with the soft hammer to make sure it's level, do not machine below this line. In fact, machine slightly above it to leave some material to be removed to clean off the tool marks. Now, some people like milled tool marks, and so do I, but not on an expansion link because eventually the tool marks will start to wear and they don't look so good when they're worn. So, I'm leaving enough clearance so that when I clean up the part and remove a tiny bit of metal to get rid of the tool marks, the expansion link will be a good fit. Not a tight fit, a good fit in the slide valve fork. The other day I got a comment from a viewer, and the viewer said, Could I please leave the lathe running at the correct speed so I could see what the speeds and feeds were? And the answer to that is unfortunately no, I have to speed it up, otherwise the videos would be too long. When I look at the YouTube statistics for my videos, the average watch time is three and a half minutes. That doesn't mean I'm going to make three and a half minute videos, because thanks to my Patreon supporters, I can now make videos much longer because I can actually spend more time making them. So once again, I would like to personally thank each and every one of my Patreon supporters, as the Patreon pledges make it possible for me to spend a lot more time doing this kind of thing and making longer and better quality videos. The Patreon logo and details are on screen at the moment, and it's quite simple, it's patreon.com forward slash Keith Appleton. And to give you an idea of what I've been talking about, that particular section was running in real time, and that would have made for a very long and very boring video. Anyway, to finish off, here is the expansion link blank, and it's a great fit in the valve fork slot, and in the next episode I will be doing the rather scary thing of milling the curved slot. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.